Okay, let's see how this one goes. See if we have any luck. Ah, we actually do have a person here. Yeah, oh, I must have the settings wrong the last time. Hello, Umra. Or hello. Oh, I suppose I can't really ask you how you pronounce your name because you can't actually verbally tell me. I've got no idea what your last name will be pronounced as, like Sekirilu. Nope, no idea. <laughs> I'm sure you had a good laugh over my terrible attempt there. What language is that, I should say? You know, where is it? Uh, yeah, I don't really recognise a lot of that. Okay, well, unfortunately I actually did all my code before, there was about a 30 minute stream, and it, for some reason it didn't show up anywhere, uh, not even on my own page when I was looking at it. So I don't know, I went off into the cyberspace of nowhere, which is quite annoying, because I effectively I've done everything now, and I sort of just ran this again just to see what I might have done wrong. I think I might have accidentally put things on private for some reason. Uh, I guess, well, a bit of a brain fart. I seem to have a lot of those. Uh, I don't suppose anybody knows off the top of their head uh, the readme.md file format techniques for putting things in GitHub. I'll try this. I probably should learn this off my heart, but there's just so many things. Get add. Yep, seems like my stream is really god awful quality tonight. I'm pushing out, yeah, it's all over the place. It's like 800, 700. Uh, I don't know whether reducing the frames per seconds will help or whether it really makes no difference. Uh, anyway, let's see if this makes it look any better. Hmm, not really. I think I'll just pause my stream, the actual watching of it, and that way at least I'm not chewing up download capacity. I don't have a lot of upstream capacity here, I'm stuck on around about 0 0.8 megabyte, and I've gone into the red zone. Why? don't understand. I don't get it. It's showing no drop frames and the CPU's alright. The only real problem is the upload uh, consumption keeps pushing well above what it should be. No. Maybe I should drop the output to something else, but uh, I am running a 1920 by 10 or 1200 screen, but I'm cutting it down to 1080. I don't know what's going wrong. I've even got my audio down to 64k bit. I 
Yeah, well, anyway, I should look at uh, how to format github readme.md and that wasn't even spelt right. I'm going to try my settings and drop things down a bit further. Da, 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 straight output. Uh, I really don't know what I should be picking here. Super fast, ultra fast. Try that. Any, uh, anyone know what the difference between... <laughs> yeah, thanks Station 240, that's quite true. <laughs> Which is a good thing for me because uh, I don't type very well. Oh, okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to see there. That explains everything. So we might go... We'll probably go four each. I really don't know why YouTube keeps complaining that my stream health is completely crap. I guess it is. Are you guys getting 1080 or anything close to that, or is it all blocky as hell? I think I might just have to... I might have to give up for the night. I'll try... stop recording, but keep streaming. Not that I have a CPU problem either. I mean, I'm only sitting on 30% CPU. Uh, it's still showing no drop frames. And it's maintaining 620, 650 kbit per second up which I would have thought would have been okay. Maybe I should change my background. Maybe the background's a problem. Oh, okay. Well, thanks, Station 240. What's the frame rate like? Is it jumping a lot? No. Anyway, the whole point of this thing originally was that uh, there's a lot of open board view, uh, not open board, there's a lot of board view files out there with a um, .bv extension on them, which are actually Microsoft Access or uh, JET database files. And while there is a library in uh, Linux and whatnot to be able to read the Access files, uh, the MS access files. We can't really use it in Open Board View because Open Board View is MIT license, which is rather permissive, so pretty much anyone can do anything they want with it. But the MDB tools library is GPL2, and obviously that's incompatible. And if I pull MDB tools into Open Board View, that will then uh, basically cause the GPL infection and subsequently we will lose the MIT licensee. Uh, so the alternative is I just made a utility that sits on the side that anyone can get. It's GPL2 license, but uh, you know, it's not an integral part of Open Board View, and you're only going to have to use it once per BV file. So like if we do BV to BVR, test.bv, test.bvr, 
I probably could just shorten that and make it automatically add the R at the end. Um, and then we can just Oh, where's that gone? Oh, that's right, this is the old version of... I can see it works. One thing I've noticed is they don't have any test points. I mean, there are these things here, but they're not really designated as that in the code, or maybe I just need to improve the decoder so it looks for test points like that. Hello, hi, hi, 217. Well... Nice to see people actually turning up this time. I just did half an hour live stream and it was probably going to nowhere because I think I must have had it on private. And, well, that's no good at all. I don't even know where it's gone. I can't see it on my video manager at all. It's just vanished yet again. I seem to be good at making things vanish. And I did check the... no, it's not that. I was thinking maybe I left out a table, but uh, when I do MDB tables, test.bv, all I've got is layout, nail, and pin, and that's it. So I'm not going to be able to really get more data than what I've already got. Uh, so if I go into the actual decoded file, And these are all the part. Uh, these are connectors, PUs, power chips, normal chips, uh, lots of normal chips. I yeah, and these obviously the network associated with it. So I I can't find any test points in there. So I don't know whether it doesn't like the grid on the board layout. Uh, oh, you mean YouTube doesn't like it? Our view. Let me turn off that board fill. Is that what you're meaning? Well, I think I probably have about a 20 second round time on this, judging by the responses. I'd consider Twitch, except uh, it's bad enough on YouTube, I can barely make it out the door, so God help me if I went to Twitch. Right, thanks for that Station 240. Uh, no, I'm not surprised, I probably yeah, would have made it panic a fair bit with the encoding. So it does run faster if overall uh, board view itself will run faster with that fill removed. But, you know, I mean, when I'm not doing live streaming, it's nice to have that fill. It just makes it easier to visually see where things are. So I don't know if you can classify these things here as test points. I mean, I suppose they're listed as T94. Let's have a look for this T96. Let's see if I can find it in here. Nope. 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 Don't make me do this. Um, T96. Nope. Okay, clearly my Vimfu is not good enough tonight. 104, 105. Yeah, if they were test points, I'd expect to see a lot more of them. Okay, T123. Oops. Ah, here we go. I mean, maybe there are test points, maybe this board doesn't have a lot of them. I guess I'm used to MacBook boards. Yeah, it's using variable bitrate 
or rather it's not uh, it's not tightly bound the bitrate it's sort of I have got the option set where it can choose to ignore it um, I've got the ultra fast oh here we go enforce streaming service bitrate limits so let's try that apply okay let's see how we go with that Let's see if I can find a MacBook Pro board view file since uh, they've always got test points in them. Let's see. Oh, there we go. We've got this one up here. Um, And it looks like that one did not encode. Okay. Oh, that's because I loaded the wrong one. There we go. I can already see this doesn't have test points on it either because I know that the board view should show up little gold, yellow gold type test points. Like if you have a look at this, you can already see the little gold items there an annotation there what is this uh, yes. so I don't know whether the BV files have deliberately left it out when they got exported from whatever source they came from or whether I'm just not detecting them because the actual uh, the actual source code that dumps or does the conversion for us it essentially is a um, select star from table so basically it dumps everything in the table I don't make any um, filtering on that the only thing yeah no, definitely it's just a full dump so I don't know what's going on Has the stream settled down, Station 240, or is it still jump, you know, being erratic? Are you out there still, Hi Hi 217? Or do you prefer to be called 217? I know you said it the other day, but I can't remember now. I'm kind of surprised Amy isn't in here. Because Amy owes me five bucks because she took a guess on what was wrong with my previous laptop repair and it wasn't what she thought it was because I also thought the same thing when I was doing it last night to the point where basically I actually chopped it out because I thought oh well that's just going to drag on uh, well I don't know what else I can do here I've now really done everything I need to for this particular project so it's there so if people want to convert their BV files to BVR they can um, the only downside is that it does need to be run on Linux uh, there is no way I think I can do this effectively on Windows what I might do is actually create a web service where you can go to Open Board View website upload your BV file and then it'll spit back a BVR Okay, you prefer 217. <laughs> Do we get to know what the origin of this high high 217 is? Seems like an interesting uh, number or name to pick. Oh, just jump from 4 to th 7 to 4. Hmm. This is a bit of a dead time in the world because Australia is, well, crap, it's midnight, 27 past midnight here, and the UK is almost finished work, and then you guys are going to go get down to the pub and pick up your fish and chips, uh, don't forget your bag of crisps, and then the US is only just staggering out of Starbucks right now. Uh, so it'd be like barely eight o'clock in the US right now, I think. I think. 
That was like uh, two hours earlier. Yeah, I think they're just barely staggering out of Starbucks and heading off to their glamorous offices. Actually, I'm surprised how many people over there don't have a kettle at home to make coffee in the morning or something like that. It was a username when I was eight and you just kept with it. Huh. Okay, well, that's uh, perseverance for you. So, Station 240. So, where are you in Australia? Or oh, are you in Australia, Station 240? Back when, well, it would have been in the mid-90s when IRC started up, uh, between nine past ten in New York, really, you guys got, what is it, daylight savings over there or something like that? I thought it would be eight o'clock in the morning. Alright, clearly I've got to get myself a clock to put on the wall so I know what time it is. 16.28 in Belgium, oh, well, at least I got that one right, UK, Belgium, etc., Thank you, Drabara. Ah, oh, g'day, fixing things. It's not that late over there in Western Australia. Come on, it's like, what, 10 o'clock in the morning over there? Besides, you guys are in a different country. I don't know why Australia includes you guys. You're your own separate place. It's weird to think that yeah, you're 5,000 kilometres away and you're still, yeah, in Australia. <laughs> no, no, um, I started IRC after I left university back in 96 and what happened? Uh, before that I was on Y Talk and Talk. No, if you <laughs> uh, um, yeah, with the Unix systems at the university, and of course, you know, you just randomly go along and see what other systems are on the network and finger the other servers and see who was on, and then you'd just try your luck and hit talk to them. But they, that was in the early innocent days of the internet before everybody was security conscious. G'day, Patrick Gill. Gill, sorry, Gill. Not Jill. Where are you from, Patrick? Uh, no, I never did Yahoo. Um, it was all just through the... Who was I with? Oh, I was with Malcolm Turnbull's uh, Oz email. That was who my provider was back then. And, yeah, with the IRC, I can't remember what network I was on initially, but the channel I was on was um, Hash Adelaide. And through that, there I bumped into a couple of people from South Africa and about three weeks later they offered me a job over in South Africa on uh, to be a web developer and I actually didn't know pretty much anything about web development at that point uh, um, so I ran across the road bought myself an HTML book and a couple of, a couple of days uh, after that I put up a demonstration page from it they hired me, I went over there and yeah, about four and a half years I was over there Oh, you're from Townsville. Okay, now you're in Weeper. Uh, I probably would have stayed in Townsville. Um, I grew up in Townsville. Uh, left there while well, I was at James Cook. And yeah, I left there in 96. Uh, went down to Brisbane, then went off to South Africa. And then came back up here. And now I'm in Charters Towers, which you will know. The Weeper, my goodness. It's like in the middle of nowhere. Do you feel a bit isolated up there? I suppose I should try and do this web page conversion thing, but it's a bit late and I'll probably make bad mistakes and I probably won't even know if I'm revealing too much information on the internet as I'm working around my website. So I'll probably save that for another day. <laughs> Hello there, CryJ2000. Yes, it, it's all over. We've done all the work. I actually had a stream earlier and was working, but it was in private, so that was my stuff up. 
Uh, I'm not used to this. Uh, I may as well close this. It's done its job. So I do wish the BV files had test points in them though. At least everything else works. What is this? What do you get? You get a nothing. Oh. Some weird stuff there. Eh. Oh, well, that's obviously the ground plane. Uh, there's some other ones. Well, no kidding. What is going on here? I really need to spend some time and fix up rendering faults like this thing here. It drives me absolutely nuts. Oh, yes, your no IP stuff problem. So, so how long before that play? <coughs> pardon me, how long before that plays up again? Um, I might be here for a little bit longer. I mean, it's getting late. And... I don't know. Who knows, maybe Chris will uh, put a stream on and then I'll go, enjoy your supper, Drabara. Uh, thank you for joining and helping me see whether this even worked or not. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've never been up to Weeper, Patrick, but uh, obviously, you know, as you can imagine, most of us do know of it, but uh, I don't think too many of us willingly go up there. <laughs> Um, I think the biggest thing I always worry about is getting isolated up there during the wet season. I do get a few people coming through here that are on their way or back from Weeper, sometimes wanting something fixed, usually a phone, but uh, it's not that common. So what took you up to Weeper anyway? Did you, like, I'm presuming a job. Look at this rendering, it's a dis oh, actually, they're actually correct. But that's often wonky, though I don't think I'll be able to do much about that. My theory on how to resolve this is to look for a dominant axis in the alignment of the pins. But something like this, eh, it's hard to beat against that mathematically. Normally that sort of thing is up around about here. And uh, you can then sort of see that there's a there'll be two dominant axes of the pin alignments. So it's the downside of not having the original files. Um, the these BRD files they do not have part orientation information. Uh, some of the FZ files. I don't know if I've got one here. Uh, yeah. What, hey, I found a. That was a bit of a bug. I'll have to make note of that. Yeah, let's try that one. Okay. Uh, FZ files often have orientation information in them, but I'm a little bit disinclined at this point to code stuff that specifically only applies to one particular format. That's obviously a botch job, and that's probably that's a power resistor network. <laughs> Uh, I'll show you what happens if you change things around to compensate for one particular type of fault. I'm going to have to switch over to the Open Board View network uh, source code. Close tabs, right? And let's see. Oh, good God, man! I can't type tonight. Uh, source uh, alright now the reason why this thing here comes up as a box is because it's not listed uh, the PRN the power resistor network it's not something I detect or bother detecting in this section here 
which is where I decide that I'm going to actually try and find a bounding box for it. Uh, let's see. Okay, yep. So what I can do is see if we add R in here, which will then make that get detected because it's, that's testing the second character of the component name. Which board is this? PK5KPL. Okay. Let's build open board view. Oh, okay. You're looking for more work. Anything specifically you're looking for? Like mining, um, technological stuff, I'm assuming. The same amount of rework. Uh, uh, okay, let's then open board view. Now we've made it so it should render that. Why didn't it render that? Did I not build it? My font size is too small. As I've become older, unfortunately, I've had to move up to 13 point. It's depressing. I used to be able to code in 10 point text. Oh well, that's why we've got problems. Errors. What's going on here? Somebody typed in something wrong and now I've got a whopping great big cluster of errors. What the hell? Somebody's been fiddling with my code. That person would probably be me. Oh, and I know why. Because I have got the wrong... Uh, I've got the wrong git branch. So, git branch... I think... I uh, git checkout. Whew. And now, I've naturally, I've broken everything. Nope, I've severely broken everything. Oh, uh, yeah, stigmatism. Yeah, I've got that slightly. Not bad, but just slightly. Like when you look up at the moon or something like that and you get uh, quite a few extra shapes off the moon. Yep, no fun at all. Makes it hard to get good glasses too for that. So, yeah, you got my sympathies there. Uh, I've successfully botched this up, my source code. Ah, uh, uh, gee, um, history grip, git grip. God damn. That's what I wanted. Oh, look at that, it doesn't crash. Right, now I have to redo this. Uh, what do I say? Power resistor and all this just so I can demonstrate something. Alright, there we go. See, now that's actually probably properly formatted or rendered. But the trouble is, sometimes you have unintended side effects, and you got to look around for them. Yeah, well, this is about my first time doing a live stream of any sort of 
meaningless proportions. Um, to be honest, I'm really not sure what I'm doing. And I don't have a webcam yet because I... <laughs> you're insane what you're talking about, my crappy coding style. Yeah, you got that right. Uh, yeah, without the webcams and everything, it's really hard to, I think, with the live stream to get a feel of being there, integrating up you know, uh, working with the person or just seeing what they're doing. But until I get my glorious 25.5 MBN here, there's not much I can do. Uh, let's see. see now, I can't, I can't put the P in here for power anything because that will then catch a million other things. But I could possibly do... Yeah, so you start adding too many things in here and it gets insane. Yeah, um, what happened with Open Board View is originally about, I think it was about nine months ago, there was a fellow called Chlorodite who released Open Board View out of, I don't know, well actually I shouldn't say fellow because I've mentioned this before, there's no indication whether it's a guy or a girl, so that was a bit presumptuous on my behalf. Uh, they put the code out there and they made a binary that ran in Windows and Lewis got his hands on it and made the video of it and I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, and then I went to go and have a look, see what they've done and then I found, well, there's no Linux version. But fortunately, there's another couple of chaps, uh, Pianov, who appears in chat with Lewis a few times and uh, Paf, <coughs> excuse me, PathMath, uh, they managed to do a Linux version, and once I got my hands on that, I was like, "Oh, cool! Yeah, that's great. I that works." But uh, I want the shapes to be more proportional, and I don't want diagonal things to just be big boxes, uh, opposing corner big boxes. I want them to be more like this. And from there, it just started spiraling out of control. And six months later, it finally released uh, seven point or 7.3 and that's when Lewis picked up the new open board view that uh, was made and from there it sort of it stayed pretty stable and there hasn't been too many complaints from Lewis or any others there's been a few little glitches but nothing substantial a uh, version of ZXW I uh, wish it was like ZXW um, yeah, I really do. ZXW is sort of a bit better in some ways for the fact that it ties in a lot of annotation stuff so that, you know, they can add interesting bits of information in there, like check these rails or common faults, I believe. Uh, I mean, Open Board View does have annotations, but they're all localized. It's not shared across the network. And they can probably get away with that because they're not in a country that probably fills the long arm of the United States law whereas over here in Australia if I do any of this that sort of stuff I will probably get a um, takedown notice pretty damn quick so what VIN plugins do I use for autocomplete uh, that's just using the control P uh, type thing like I'm pretty sure it's like yeah I just hit control P and that brings up my list but I think that that comes off C tags. So yeah, if you sort of look up C tags and Vim, it should give you what you're after. Yeah, sued. Yeah, that's pretty much sued, and they'll probably send one of their uh, spare um, cruise missiles my way. I'm sure they can have a few that they don't need to send over to wherever they're sending them these days. But yeah, for the most part, uh, Open Board View is, I wouldn't call it my baby, but I do tend to do the bulk of the code. Uh, there's this other fellow that I was talking about, Pianov. They added the cross-compiling ability, so like I don't have to run Windows to build the Windows version. Um, it just builds in Linux and the binary works, it's brilliant. Yes, it's an IBM. It's a good old steam-driven uh, home invader killer IBM M series. I will not let these things go. This thing has got a frayed 
uh, connector cable it's still a PS2 one and yeah, I probably should look at buying a new couple from uh, who's the people at, uh, I can't clicky keyboard or whoever they are now and they've got Unicom that's it Unicom I should probably look at buying a couple of those to replace these ones and put these into sort of storage my wife also uses one of these she's a writer and um, yeah she really doesn't like typing on other keyboards it's got to be one of these IBM ones and yeah I mean some people think they're really noisy but I love it it's <laughs> so it makes me feel like you're actually doing something proper yes the curly cables the ones that get caught on the edge of your back edge of your desk and when you try to pull the keyboard forward you just stretch it until it snaps and everything comes flying at you yep that's them you can actually convert these you can buy a circuit board that will do direct USB output um, I'm trying to think uh, have a look uh, Let's see, uh, IBM M keyboard, there we go, USB. Uh, con it's probably not going to give me what I want. Oh, look, another YouTube. You know, there's there's someone there's a board around and yeah they oh here this is probably it they went to a fair bit of effort to do it but I gotta admit it's probably more realistic for me to just buy a new one from Unicomp. Hey Robbie, how do you pronounce that last name? Stoke, Stoke. So many different ways of pronouncing things. I'm pretty sure it's Unicomp. And they do have some nice ones, though. I do wish they had a all black. Yeah. Come on, stop it. Ultra Classic. I mean the pricing's pretty good. Here we go. Ultra classic black buckling spring, eighty-four US dollars. But of course, as most of us in Australia know, the buy price isn't the real problem. It's the flipping freight that's a killer. I mean, you'll probably pay fifty bucks freight for that, and US. Uh, so yeah, I should order a couple of them. It would be nice to have some fresh new ones because th there's a couple of failing keys on this. Like, I've stolen springs now from my scroll lock and pause break keys because no one ever uses those. Toe. Uh, but there's definitely something really nice about picking up like a classic 1988 IBM M something around that era it's sort of like huh, a piece of history that actually is still practical and useful yes shipping is yuck it's like me with my microscope I mean so the microscope's what uh, here we go stuff I want I keep a list though and hope that maybe one day my wife will investigate what I'm looking at in my browser and go oh look the stuff he wants and buys me it but then yeah, I don't know where she'll get the money from. So yeah, we've got five hundred and eight dollars US for this, and then you throw freight on, and that's like three hundred and ten dollars on top. So it's what is that? Oh, let's say eight hundred and twenty US. And so where's that? So it's probably yeah, it's we'll easily see a thousand dollars gone down the drain to get my microscope, and that doesn't even come for camera. Seven hundred Aussie, yeah, adds up quick. Oh, and if you, uh, yeah, three hundred dollars shipping. Yep, that's what it works out to. You can do it through eBay. I've noticed, and they go slightly cheaper shipping. 
But I don't know, you know, I'm having my concerns. Uh, I mean, I, maybe I shouldn't, but I, don't know, I get paranoid. I've had too many things I've ordered from overseas that are expensive and they just vanish. Make sure, yeah, they are trying to knock it. This is a, this is a simulfocal one. So, yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna end up with that one-eyed pirate crap. Uh, what I liked on this one was it's got the adjustable 144 LED light, and yeah, it is the, it is the trinocular, and it's the three and a half to 45. So I suspect that means it must have the Barlow's already on that, or is it? Oh, that's right. This one here I'm confused because it says three and a half to 45 here, but then down here it says seven to 45. So one of them got it wrong. I think it actually is a 7045. Yeah, and then you put a half a half bar low and you get three and a half to twenty-two and a half. Yeah, <laughs> like Jason, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish they would do some more hard drive recovery videos. That was pretty cool. Uh watching them transfer those platters just using some scotch tape. I mean it works but uh, it's not bad for two and a half inch platters. I don't think I'd want to try it with the three and a half inch platters especially if there was more than two. Uh, ideally you would really want to have drives that have only got the one platter <laughs> and then you've got no problems with alignment there. But by god it really stirred up the hornet's nest of the professionals. You can't do that. That won't work. you got to use these things. And the trouble is a lot of the clamps that uh, you can get this sort of thing, they just will not fit down between the platters and the chassis anymore. Uh, but of course with modern drives you also got the problem that there are the um, dampers or the bumpers that sit on top of the platters towards the back of the chassis and so you're doomed at the end of the day. The only thing you can really do there is get a specialised bearing or motor replacement tool and they're like two grand or something like that. It's crazy. So I was thinking of getting into hard drive recoveries like that with a clean room, but with solid states taking over now, um, I sort of decided, no, nah, I'm better off doing the microelectronics stuff now. Uh, plus I've got more experience with that anyway, but with more manufacturing than repairs. But yeah, it makes it a nice change being on the other side of the other side of the firing line. Uh, let's see. I was planning on doing a circuit board design uh, live video at one point. I want to make a iPhone battery tester that will do the usual um, charge or really discharge, charge, discharge uh, capacity comparison because I am getting far too many batteries that come here from my supplier and you think yay I've got some batteries and you fit them to your customer's phone and this is with ones that aren't TriStar failures and then two weeks later they come back and the battery's just crapped itself ah uh, well what have we got there yeah that, that power resistor modification actually doesn't yet seem to bring up any other faults or weirdness yet but then that's probably because I'm looking. What the? I've got nothing on the back side. Oh, that's right. This is a. This isn't a MacBook board. That's why. So open. No, we do not want my photos. Open. Let's have a look here. Any other weirdness? I might actually keep that in there. It fixes up one more bad rendering and so far I can't really see any issues. But I can guarantee you I'll do it. I'll make that a permanent fixture and then Lewis will load up something on his stream and it will be a complete disaster. Oh, the backup, but 
yeah, I've looked at that. Um, I guess this for me it was a case of sometimes I like to have things where it sort of steps outside of the actual controller data and whatnot and just simply looks at uh, what it does in the milliamps and all that. Yeah, sometimes it's just fun also to do a little project. It could be useful for other things as well. Like I have a lot of lithium cells here from other things. But in fairness, my I do have like model aircraft chargers which do the whole cycle process. Uh, but of course they work directly on the lithium cells rather than through the controller or protection boards, or at least I prefer to. Uh, so I don't know. It, it probably won't actually ever happen. It was just something I was trying to think of to do. Uh, I really haven't come up with any new electronics projects in quite a while. It's getting a bit, a uh, bit boring on that front, or yeah, you know, nothing interesting. The last thing I really did was the uh, USB current meters, and then no sooner I had that out and finished, uh, they were available for two dollars ninety-five from China, so there wasn't much point doing anything more there. Yeah, the the lipo charge that or the multi chemistry charges nowadays that they have for model aircraft syst uh, batteries i mean they're brilliant it's like twenty nine dollars and they pretty much do everything um, you just can't you can't compete with that sort of thing coming out of China anymore like if you go to hobby king it's all over the place uh, and that's handed up in back into p c repairs and everything because I was doing all electronics repair uh design and manufacturing for model aircraft and uh, then Hobby King and whatnot came along and I was pretty much overnight they had everything I had and I was like oh well that's it no point investing any more money in that I'm out of here so so this is my old shop and this is one of the most popular things I actually end up making Funnily enough, it was one thing I didn't really want to make. It was just that people kept saying, "Oh, make these," and I was like, "Ah, who wants, who wants a five volt regulator these days? Uh, they're a dime a dozen." But uh, it had a specific purpose for things we call discus launch gliders, which use very small batteries and you need to have an alarm in them. So uh, I made these, and I must have sold about five, six hundred of them. It was good business, but yeah, it was boring as hell because once you design it, that's it, you're just manufacturing them and yeah, no real interesting stuff there. Um, DC DC converters that aren't eBay crap. Yeah, a lot of them run at very low switching speeds and yeah, they really don't, when you try to hit them with a sudden current demand or power demand they sag quite badly and then when you let go of the load they overshoot badly so yeah it's it's a bit of a bit of a risky thing if you've got delicate electronics there I suppose you can always put a whopping great big cap in between them uh, what is this check user precision world on eBay it's where you got um, ah yeah okay I can fix that just give me a second I think, let's see, can I, there you go, you have the power, you can paste your link now, <laughs> since I know exactly who you are, are they in Australia, yeah, no overcurrent, over temper check, they're, they're sort of really, blind flying DC DC converters I mean it's fine if you don't uh, have anything too sensitive on the other end but yeah, if you, when you look at it through a scope uh, with your transient responses it's like yeah uh, did you get that no I haven't got it yet I want to get it but um, everything keeps stealing my thousand dollars it's like if it's not rates it's uh, yeah property land tax rates it's registration, which being in, a, in Queensland, you will know our registration is dreadful. Like, I mean, what is it now? It's like $800 a year for a six cylinder. Uh, I think I'm going to have to get rid of the Ford Falcon and go down to some four cylinder 
thing. I don't know what. Oh, well. Oh, they're in the USA. Uh, I really wish there was a reasonably priced Amscape supply distributor in Australia. I am not going to be taking up that challenge. Um, I'll end up like the Lewis's attempt with Crest Ultrasonic Cleaners. You're anonymous. <laughs> I don't know who you are. No, I'm just kidding. Let me fix that up. <laughs> there you go. But I do need to get the Amscope. I really do, because I'm sort of I've got a bunch of phones sitting in my workshop that I can't do at the moment because yeah, it's like I can handle down the 0402 parts, but if you go to below that, no thanks. And the phones they're so tightly packed, uh, you just got no room to make an error in there. Do you get any rego uh, concessions being up in Weeper because of your remoteness, or is it still full on rate? I mean, your petrol costs have got to be absurd where you are. I mean, it's like a dollar twenty-seven a litre here at the moment, but I imagine you're going to be up at one sixty, one seventy. Hello, Sanaka. Um, I do not know how to pronounce the rest of your name. Sandagumi Wiwadana. Nope. I am not going to try that. It was hard enough for me pronouncing South African names. So, let alone Australian names, let alone anywhere else. Tchow, well, come on, Weeper's like in the middle of nowhere. I mean, at least over in WA, you've got Perth. But Weeper, it's like, eh. Realistically, you're almost closer to Indonesia than you are anywhere else. Sanaka. Alright, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, so pretty much if you do any driving for a couple of months, you'll be yeah, back to even again. Broom. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone live in Broom? No. Uh, I, I did see that uh, microscope you linked in, Sanaka. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to decide where to go about it, minimize my yeah risks and everything. Yeah. People rave about it. I think well, broom. People rave about broom. Are you kidding? Okay. I've actually personally have never been there, but from what I've seen on the map, uh, I got as far as um, uh, Ord River. Kind of Nara, that sort of place. Uh, best place about over there was the um, Barramundi fishing. At least that was back in the mid ninety, uh, mid eighties, actually, not mid nineties, mid eighties. Uh, are you from Sri Lanka? Oh, yeah, Sri Lanka. You guys beat us up in cricket a little bit too often. <laughs> Actually, is Sri Lanka coming over this year for the One Day Internationals? Oh, well, it's one o'clock already now. I probably should actually wind up. Uh, since I'm not really providing anything interesting for you guys at the moment. Uh, what was I going to... Oh, yeah, for the Australians, um, Mechatronics, they have, uh, this place, Mechatronics, they have the um, Hakko uh, 951 on special at the moment. I was, not the 888. Does anyone buy the 888? Because it probably seems a bit, bit of a, yeah. I'm not, that whole handle assembly... I just can't get the tips you want for it. Um, FX9 
Uh, looks like the website's as slow as my searching, um, my stream. Come on. I think my wife is probably going to be complaining right now because I'm using up all the uplink speed, which, as you know, when you use up all the uplink, the download slows down pretty severely. Oh, come on. That's it. I'm just going to shop by brand. Yes, it's one o'clock in the morning. Uh, all right, th this isn't going right for me, but they have the 951 for about 388 X-Tax, which is pretty good price considering, thanks to our good friend Lewis, uh, Hacko, or rather the distributors or resellers, jacked the price of everything up like twice. So, I mean, you used to be able to get a 951 for about 350 and then all of a sudden it jumped up to $700, all thanks to Lewis. Why is this so slow? Eight forty PM. Uh, about what time do you usually stay up to? Ooh, daylight lamp looks interesting. I best not spend any money there. Fluke one seventeen C. I haven't. I haven't seen the one. Is that like the one fifteen? Ten AM Texas. The only thing I really know about Texas is that you guys pretty much believe that everything is bigger and better in Texas than anywhere else. So, um, yeah, that's sort of like the uh, <laughs> the obnoxious, prejudiced, ignorant viewpoint from everyone else over here. Yeah, I don't know why it's not loading properly. Maybe they're doing, I don't know, maybe they're doing a database reconciliation or something ridiculous. But anyway, but if you check them out, they do have very good prices for a lot of the equipment. And they've got a, all the air cleaners, things like that. Uh, I used to use Element 14 for a lot of this stuff, but uh, I've found Mechatronics is much cheaper than Element 14. Yeah, he's, he's moved over to like the JVC and the Weller and everything else, so, but the damage is done. So Haka got a feel of the fame and said, yeah, let's double up the price, we're going to make a profit margin. Oh, great, they're crashing. Filiberto Caraballo. Oh, man, I am no, I know I'm mangling your names, I'm so sorry. Um, let's see, what was I doing? You're on 100 megabits per second? Ah, lucky. Is that f fiber or are you on um, VDSL? Yes, I do have an ultrasonic cleaner. I have got a small one though. Error processing your request. Oh, great, we broke it. Um, I've got a little 1.5 litre ultrasonic cleaner and it does a really good job. It's obviously more for the iPhones and things like that. Uh, won't quite fit the MacBook Pro boards, but uh, yeah. what are they using? Magneto. I don't even know what Magneto is. Oh, hybrid fiber, coax. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the HFC. Uh, I worry about its age. I'm getting on a bit. I suppose it depends if you're in a new area or not. I mean, I'm sort of happy enough with the VDSL that we're getting, the MBN, but uh, I mean it is obviously maxing out at 140. I doubt I'll even get, uh, I doubt I'll even get the true 25.5 here. I'm just going to try it out to start with because it's a free trial. Uh, I'm paying for 12.1 but they upgraded to 25.5 and if they can maintain that speed 
like within about 80-90% of it, then you know, I'll, I'll consider jumping up to 140. Uh, what well, ultrasonic? Uh, it was an eBay. Spe- it wasn't the cheapest of eBay ones. It was a fairly moderately expensive Australian supplier one, and it does do a good job. And I'll see if I can find it. Just give me a second. Put the IBM M to good use. Uh, They're fairly much like all of them. I think a lot of the time, like with the hot air systems, they just re you know put a different front label on them or whatever. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's see if it's these guys. I'm fairly sure it's these guys here. So it's the same model anyway. It's like I got, the, I think it was a 1.3. Yeah, this is. They've changed the face on it, but I think it's all much the same. Given that I bought mine about four years ago, I would say whoever supplied it probably doesn't even exist anymore. Ah, oh, mix back are they? Good. Uh, was it 9.1? Oh, 220. So you're getting a decent download there, but yeah, your upload's going to be a bit of a limit. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, 389, but that's XGST, so yeah, 40. So you end up 430. It's not as cheap as it used to be, but it is better than the seven eight hundred dollars that they were ripping us off with. have to pick up one of those and a bunch of tips and yeah upgrade the one I've got at the moment I've got a two stations at the moment I've got a Goot RX 711 let's see if we can do this Goot RX 711 yeah that's this thing and it's actually quite similar to the triple eight in terms of the handle I find that the tips are actually the compatible uh, it's a nice station I've used it probably for about 10-12 years now but I also have a uh, 100 watt Dick Smith Electronics one uh, the ultrasound I'd probably you know, if you're going to be doing more maybe go for the 3 litre or maybe even 5 litre uh, it really depends on how big the boards you're going to go for the cleaner is the big um, the big difference maker, like the liquid you put in there, because for a long time I was having really bad results. It was like, what's the point of um, you know using these ultrasonics? But then I bought proper cleaning liquid from Element 14. Uh, so Element 14, we can't get the Branson liquid that I know of in Australia. Yeah, like the Goop Wick, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll try. I do buy a lot of stuff from these Element 14 people. Uh, yeah, most people consider them quite expensive, but the trick is if you dig around, they've got some really good prices. Yeah, I'm just. The trick is to dig around and wait for when they bring every three months they bring out a new catalogue of specials, and some of the prices you get in there are just fantastic. Oh, look, they've got a. This thing here would be equivalent to the one that Lewis is selling, I think. It's like one and a half gallons or so. So, price is about on par as well. Shesto. Yeah, okay. Uh, Okay, this is the liquid I use. 
So imbecile. You don't need a lot. Uh, it's about, I think it's a 10 to 1 mix ratio. And you can just leave it in there for weeks and weeks and weeks. And, oh, 5 to 1. And I usually put the temperature up to about 55 odd degrees. <laughs> Laptop repair. Oh man! If only I knew how to actually do it myself. Really, I I go back and look over the laptops I have repaired, and it's a little bit scary. But sometimes I wonder how on earth I did it. But there was a um, there was a Dell laptop I fixed, and it had a fault with its GPU. And I don't even know how I worked my way through to it, but it ended up being this tiny little. I think it was a, it was an 0201 pull down resi pull up resistor on the other side of the GPU on the other board side, and it had eaten away a track or something like that. I wasn't sure whether it was a corroded from chemical like a bug getting in there, or whether it was an electrical corrosion uh, from arcing. But I didn't even have a board view, and somehow I found that thing. So. Yeah, a lot of the time, if uh, I don't even know how I'm doing it, and PC boards are the worst. There's no real information for them, and even when you do find a board view and a schematic, they usually aren't even matching up properly with the board you have. So, yeah, for learning, all I can think of is you have to just keep doing it all the time. Uh, I would say my failure rate is about. <laughs> It's got to be around about 75% of the time I can't fix them. But yeah, fixing things, this is the stuff. It, it works well. Like I said, you've got to get the temperature up, though. If you don't get that temperature up, it will not... Um, the boards will come out looking junk. My server setup... Uh, which server setup are you interested in? because I have like a little uh, HP nano server, the one they've got like four hot swap drives in them and then I have my data recovery servers, well, I shouldn't really call them servers, they're more like little um, appliances where I just put my uh, what do you call it? Uh, let's see Come on, where is it? Uh, playlists. Data recovery. Are you you going to go for the 3 liter or the 6 liter? Here we go. Yeah, certainly with the cheap ones, I think the the biggest problem for the cheap ones tends to be, as Lewis complains about, mostly it's the heating elements are really horribly slow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, pause. I don't want to be playing. Uh, this is these are my backup appliances, so to speak. They're just a little mic, uh, mini ITX board. Uh, these are J1, J1800 CPUs, and I think it's about 70, 80 bucks to buy those motherboards. And then I have a, a, a three and a half inch front loader tray, and the whole thing boots off this USB stick. And then I've got an eight terabyte hard drive in there, and all my data recovery just goes, you know, from the <coughs> pardon me, goes from the hard drive that I'm trying to pull and goes straight onto the 8 terabyte and that's it, there's no real networking required yeah, I don't know which one to go for in that case, like between 3 litre and 6 litre it really comes down to what board sizes you're going to try and um, what do you call it <laughs> YouTube <safety. laughs> how many levels can I go down uh, 
yeah, it really comes down to the board size. So I would like probably three litre would be a good size. You should be able to just cram some of the MacBook boards in there. You definitely won't get most PC, laptop, or certainly not motherboards in there. Mostly because they're just, well, as you know, they're all awkward, odd sizes. Uh, I know a lot of people complain about Mac apples and whatnot, but really, compared to PC laptops, Apple Macs are a lot nicer to work on. They're far more consistent. Yeah, to back up client stuff, this is the sort of thing like I like to use. The 8 terabyte. I use the Seagate SMR 8 terabyte drives, uh, mostly because they were cheap at the time for the size capacity, SMR, Seagate. <coughs> yeah, these are the drives I use to store all the client images on. So like I will take a, a 500 gigabyte drive and using DD Rescue will put an image onto that 8 terabyte. It's saved my bacon so many times. Most jobs, if I've got any sort of uneasiness or anything, uh, not sure about something, I'll always generally make a clone of the customer drive before I do anything further. Yeah, the odd shapes and whatnot. Like, I've got one Toshiba here. I, I can't remember which one it is. And its aspect ratio is ridiculous. It's like 350 millimeters wide and then uh, about 180 thick. And it's all over the place. You can't fit that thing into an ultrasonic cleaner unless you've got something like a 10-liter uh, or whatnot. And it's, it's a big waste of energy heating up all that liquid. The only thing I will make a note of is you probably notice like, Lewis will run his ultrasonic in the shop, uh, just in the open air. Um, I don't know how he can cope with that because those things are loud. Like it makes my ears feel like someone is um, rubbing two glasses together. That really high pitched screech. And I mean I'm half deaf, but that thing would just like send me insane. So I don't know how he does it. I like to keep my ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, in a cabinet or in another room, somewhere away from people. Yeah, that's right, um, CryJ2000. It's it's just far more practical to do MacBook repairs. Which unfortunately, I don't get many here. 99% um, of my stuff is all PC laptops. And yeah, a lot of the a lot of the laptops are just junk. Like I usually get PCH values is a bit common thing I get here. GPU values, obviously. Um, and like the other night, just machines getting too old, like that BIOS failure. Yeah, I don't know how Lewis can talk over that ultrasound. I suppose he can, but yeah, just having that thing screeching next to you, uh, no, it drives me insane. I'll keep it in a different cabinet. <laughs> But yeah, so people really take a dig at Apple, but yeah, even their phones, at least you can actually still pull them apart and they've got screws, unlike HTC and now Samsung after the, uh, well, once they started with the S5 with that whole bond of glass and uh, screen at the front, you've got to pull it off to get it into anything. It's just maddening. It's like, it's like someone in Samsung decided, all right, we've made it too easy for them. People are fixing our stuff. Let's uh, let's booby trap it and use some ultra thin glass and LCD at the front and yeah, ruin a few tech lives. I will not do the Samsungs anymore. The HTCs straight away go pretty much into the no thank you department. Um, iPhones are about the only thing that is realistically repairable anymore. Uh, how long to ultrasonic for? Usually four or five minutes, I find. Uh, I've noticed Lewis tends to he roll turns his boards over. Uh, I've never done that myself. I mean, it probably is actually quite useful to do that, but I've never personally tried it. Yeah, all sold. Yeah. 
that's probably you can blame Lewis that probably probably everybody's like going, I want one ultrasonic Lewis is using it and they've gone and bought them all out there should be some Australian suppliers for them so we've got here Doo -doo -doo. So I mean, this is a good 300 watt heating element. At six liters, that's that's going to probably take a half hour or so to heat up. Now the price isn't too bad. I mean that's cheaper than what uh, the Crest ones are selling for. Smooth brain butt test on my <laughs> Oh, this, uh, the Sony Xperia's. Yes, uh, I actually have my phone is a Xperia Z1 and when I first was doing video recordings I was using the Sony Xperia the only trouble I had with that with the camera was it just kept hunting for focus far too much but uh, now, now I just use it back as a phone again I do like them, they're nice and sturdy and they run quite well uh, I wouldn't want to change the screen on it again. I've done it a couple of times and I find that with the battery in them, trying to get the battery out without breaking things too badly is a bit of a pain. And there are all those different water seals that you're going to migrate across. It's like, yeah, it's too much work. Why do you tell the office on a cleaner as a waiver? Because even though you can't really... Uh, even though it doesn't seem loud consciously, audibly, there is a lot of uh, pressure still being imposed on your ears from that ultrasonic and maybe it doesn't actually cause any harm but you know, I've already got a limited amount of hearing, I don't want to lose the rest of it so for me I prefer to just keep it away where it's not potentially um, causing me more hearing damage because those ultrasonic uh, piezo elements, they yeah, they put out a fair bit of uh, decibels. I think it's well over for uh, well over 100 dB. I think. I don't know if they have any of the details here. Anyway, it's bloody hell. It's 1:30. All right, I got to go to sleep because I have to get up in the morning because. I need to watch about two and a half hours of streaming so that I feel like I'm ready to take on the day. Um, realistically, I don't have that much to do tomorrow. At the moment, the workbench is a bit empty. I'll have to, I don't know, <coughs> go downtown and push over a few people who are holding their iPhones so they crack their screens and then I can get some um, screen replacement jobs. <laughs> but anyway, I really need to wrap up. But I appreciate that you all jumped in and let me know that things were running on this live stream. Uh, it's, I don't know what went wrong earlier on, but that's the way it goes. Let's see, I'll, I'll have a quick look at this eBay one. Yeah, fixing things, they all probably come from the same factory. They just put different uh, labels on the front, different control panels. So you probably won't go wrong with that, particularly if it's reasonably cheap, like a three litre. What, what was the three litre cost on that one? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, 100 bucks, okay. Um, 120 watts. So it's, it's going to be a little bit low on the... Oh yeah, here we go. 120 watt of ultrasonic power, 100 watt of heat power. So that's going to be slower than the 300 watt 6 litre one, but it should be okay. I mean, for 100 bucks, I guess it's a case of give it a whirl. How bad can it be? Uh, as long as you get that liquid hot and you use that, uh, you use that ultrasonic cleaning fluid, you should be right. Yeah, nice and cheap, 95 bucks. That's actually cheaper than my one and a half litre one, so yeah, interesting to see they've come down. Alright, I'm out of here. The effects of my coffee have now sufficiently worn off and I'll probably be able to go off to sleep with the air conditioner in spite of the fact that it's in the middle of autumn. Oh well. Thank you all, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.